Justin Lawrence, Paul Smith on my left, on my right is Jeremy Hansen, I'm Brad Town. Uh, with us also is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. And I'd like to take and talk about, we'll do Coos Road first. And I think the, the thinking of the board was since nobody was living on Coos Road, that we were wondering if the landowners would be willing to not have us plow this winter. Not so much reclassification of it. I guess that's the big question. Is I've, I've talked to Tim a few times yeah. about potentially, we don't have to rush over there, and, and I'm not going to speak for Steve, I'm sure he'll speak on his own. But, I mean, that's not that big a deal. But the, the thought of going to a class four is a huge deal, I yeah. think. So I, I don't know how, I guess that's the question is how do you get around, you know, are you required well, to do so much? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, I wouldn't think you have to, you know, when it's convenient yeah. to plow, but there's still people that get down to access their property have to go down that road. Yeah. So yes, sir. If you did do that, um, wouldn't the maintenance to bring the road back to travelable condition in the spring outweigh the costs of plowing it intermittently? You don't have to, I agree with Chuck, you know, you don't have to rush over there on every storm, but if you just keep it passable, you know, so if you wanted to get in there, to, uh, I, I, I use my property for family events, uh, kids to hunt, uh, the other kids to camp, people have fires or whatever. Um, it's been in the family six to five years uh, or longer. Um, without that road, uh, I have no reasonable access to the property. We don't, I don't personally need a road accessible 365 days of the year. But my concern, I think, as far as uh, 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 plowing it, not plowing it at all in the winter time. Uh, Chip and Henry are well aware of excavation costs. I used to be in construction for 40 years. It costs money to bring a road back in the spring if you haven't maintained it all winter long. So well, that, that would be my only thought. My only thing there is that uh, with farm roads, if you, don't, if you stay off them during the winter, you don't get the frost. And you don't get the repair bills in the, in the spring when the <coughs> frost starts to come out. You don't get the, uh, the softening of the dirt so much. But I, 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 I see that as well. <coughs> you know, I said I'd stay in the background, but maybe sure. I can be oh, useful. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> there actually is a statutory mechanism for the select board to say even though it's class three we're not going to plow in the winter you can do that now maybe there's some happy middle ground you know don't get out there right away and just to prevent what steve talks about maybe some plowing somewhere just in the best interest of the town but you absolutely have the authority to decide even though it's class three we're not going to keep it plowed like you would yeah. in class three. Well, the only thing I was thinking uh, as far as cutting the, or trying to do some savings on the budget was uh, if we didn't plow it, it would, um, if nobody was actually living down there or using the land during the winter, it wouldn't be a, a loss. It would be a savings to the town. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense to me. But Steve, right. yeah, Tim. Um, Rowell Hill and the Gun Cub Road off of Route Two. We don't plow them in the winter time, <coughs> and then when we open them in the yeah. spring, all I got to do is just grade them out, and they're back up to yeah. snuff. Well, I mean, we've never had any as long as I've been here seven years now, and 
I, we've never had any trouble when we open them back yeah. up in the spring. Yeah, I mean that. Maybe I'm stepping in a line here, but that makes sense to me. I, I would think if you plow and drive that frost down, that's when you're going to get the problems in the spring. Well, the other thing is, is that um, even though if the town were not to plow it, and it would still be the town would still be available if it, if it was absolutely needed for people to be down there to open it. Okay, that, that brings up a question. Um, say uh, Chip or Henry or myself decided that we needed to thin out some uh, of the forest land. Because I tried to uh, you know, do a forest management yep. on my piece. Um, lots of times these guys, they want to haul in the wintertime when the road can freeze up rather than uh, tear it up mm -hmm. in the spring. Um, so in a situation like that, uh, it would be pretty costly to open that road up in the wintertime for a logger, wouldn't it? Well, usually, from my experience, the loggers pay for that. I mean, they got skidders, they can go down through there and yeah. kind of break it open. It only takes a night for it to freeze down enough to put a log truck on. Anything else on coos? If, if there is development down there, then it would just revert back to yeah. daily, daily plowing. One, the way I was looking you know, at it, once once people were, were say living down there or construction was happening down there over the winter, the town would probably take it, you know, take it and be open it and start plowing it again. Okay, so it's so not to put it into your mouth, but it's not really a reclassification or class yeah, four. Not for coos really. Okay. Okay. And just for your record, you'd be operating under Title 19, Section 310. Gives you the authority to not do the plowing. What, uh, what would be your position if you tried it for a season and found uh, there was excessive erosion on the, uh, the road, say, from the top of uh, the entrance to Coos to the Beaver Gate? Uh, the beaver, uh, the, the culvert there. Yeah. You know, are you going to be reluctant to uh, uh, re well, not for go back to maintaining it as a class not three not road? For, not for doing it now. <laughs> you know. No, well, it looks to me like somebody's going to stop lately. <laughs> well, I mean, it might be a maybe a, a year trial might might work out pretty well. Then everybody will see what it is. I, I think, you know, like Tim said, Rolla Hill Road, I think, is probably in a, a worse, worse place in terms of runoff mm -hmm. than Coos is. Gun, and it gun, does, and it does all right. Is, yeah. Gun Club's well, really worse and, than any of them. But there's, not, there's nobody living on Gun Club. There's lots of people living on Rolla Hill, Ralph Rolla Hill. Yeah. So. so is your concern that if it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be my concern if I owned the property too, especially be that if it didn't get maintained or it got reclassified to a class four road or whatever, it's going to devalue your property. And should you choose to develop it down sure. there, right? That's, how would it? Right. You don't want to have to go back and forth, and I don't think that's your intention. No, I was. That's um, but which that's is, why I think we should have some policy in place for that for the reclassification if that was an <coughs> issue. Yeah, we'll probably just. See how it goes, and yeah. if, it, if it works great, if it's awful, then you figure something else out, I guess. <coughs> the end of Coos or the start of Coos Trail by the by uh, Airport Road. Uh, once you stop plowing that, if we, of course, love Vermont, but it all depends on the winter. Mm -hmm. Whether you have an icy winter, if you have a snowy winter, but um, would there be any objections to perhaps putting a barricade there, so you don't have to worry about people driving down in there and down past the red house a little yeah. bit? It's your road. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, well, we always plowed. We always plowed down to the house because somebody's always lived there, yeah. Yeah. so there was a mountain of snow there. Okay, before. When I was here before, yeah. when I came back this time, they were they were going all the way down. Okay. 
But we used to just plow down to the, the first house, leave the snow right in the road so nobody could get down through and then turn around and come out of there. And the plate goes up after two. What was that it was nice he went to the Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's we're, we're, we're going to have to maintain it down that far because if, if, they yeah. ever, if that house ever caught fire, there's nobody oh, yeah. living there now, right? If it caught fire, the fire department's going to have to get in there. So, I mean, it's not a big deal for us to pull out down there. Yeah. You're down with the house? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you collect the taxes, just the same, don't you? Yeah. But the thing it is, Henry, it, it's it's like we we try to collect less taxes this way. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the name Coos. It's not Coos. It's a Coos trail. Coos trail. Okay. That's right, Henry. Yeah. The way I say. Indians it. out of New Hampshire. <laughs> Coos. Coos. <laughs> so anything else on Coos trail? <laughs> If not, we'll go on to Black Road. And Black Road, Josh, you want the town to plow from the corner of Crosstown down to the end of Black Road that is now maintained. And as in with the Kuaz Trail, how does that benefit the town? Well, I, I've actually developed more property down there. The town has given me a building permit and I've put in another apartment dwelling off on another piece of property that I own down there. So, my, and actually I haven't even had a reappraisal yet for that property. And my um, actual taxes where I live now, I'm paying over 10,000 a year in taxes. So I would think that that would be enough to cover the town's cost to go and plow one tenth of a mile of road and sand just through the winter. And that's the only maintenance I'm really looking for on that road. And it was up to, you know, as you guys that brought up the uh, thought of changing it to a class three road. Yeah. So, and, and, and you know, my reasoning is, is because uh, that now, you know, with a dead end sign out there and also with uh, GPS technology, there's people all the time going down there. Even today, someone came down there, drove right down to my barn, right through uh, no trespassing signs and uh, wondering how to get to Black Road. <coughs> so uh, the people are, and I've been, there's been people, friends in my house that couldn't even get out until we've gone and helped people get unstuck on the road. So they could get out for and even this winter my wife couldn't even get to our house because there was someone stuck on the road and it was my hopes that with the town maintaining it that it would be good enough so when people do go down there following their gps that they would be able to get back out well unfortunately i don't think that's going to change if they're following their gps whether the town maintains it or whether you maintain it I well i see that i'm sorry brad I to to you. go ahead um, I don't, don't need to maintain it as well for the vehicles I have. We both have all-wheel drive vehicles with scudded yeah. tires, so I don't need to have it sanded at every storm and plowed at every storm. And, and a lot of people that go down, go down there have like all-season tires on their car. So they're, yeah. they're kind of trapped when they get down there. Okay. And was there any Numbers you can give us for, uh, or you haven't, you say you haven't been reappraised yet? No. Okay. I was thinking that my tax bill right now is plenty enough that I come into the town that you'd be able to uh, take care of a tenth of a mile. Especially also if you're going to not be plowing coal. How old you? You know, if you're not going to be doing that, that road was more like five tenths of a mile. I'm looking for one tenth of a mile. How much does it cost you a year to have that hired out? Oh, I haven't kept track. I get charged X amount, forty bucks a whack to do it. 
and that's only plowing. That's not even sanding. I've I've sanded it myself using the town sand pile, and I have a sand barrel that I keep at the bottom yep. that I that I barely use for myself. That sand barrel is there mostly for people that go down there and get hung up and can't get out. And and you know part of this came about when I couldn't when I couldn't keep the sand barrel full anymore because the town limited you to two buckets of sand. Yeah. Well, people were showing up taking more than well, and, and, and I can, and I'm guilty of that myself too, you know, because when I would come, I'd come with my pickup, and you know, I just shovel, a, yeah. you know, half a sand barrel worth into the back of my truck, and I fill that barrel back up. Any questions for Josh? I just have a comment. I think that I rode around today a bunch, looked at a bunch of several of the roads, looked at the mapping that we have for the Berlin base map. And the roads aren't marked, some of them are mismarked on their base map. I saw this opportunity with both topics, the class three downgrade and the class four upgrade as a, a, a chance to actually get it get together and maybe take an inventory of our town roads and what we maintain because it's clear that we don't have well, it, we have our our spreadsheets, but I mean I don't know that it, Dana, I don't know that you know what Tim's plowing and maintaining and all the sections completely, and I don't know that... Our I wouldn't pretend to say that I know exactly what <laughs> right. Tim's plowing. Not enough. that you need to, but I mean, we don't even, we don't have a full inventory, so I think that... But I will say the base map, it's probably I, I believe there are errors in that as well, right. so I mean, this would be a good exercise to get that... So just resolved. looking yeah. at all of this, especially when we get you know, reimbursement money, uh, when we look at upgrading a class <coughs> four road to a class three, and we get some state aid money that starts to kick in as a result of that. Um, so I think it would, <coughs> since it's a third of our town budget, it would make sense to have a good handle on that. And I don't feel like we do. You know, I had one more comment too. Was that you know back. Um, a few months ago, or however, six months ago, I went and spoke with Tim to find out what roads they actually do plow in the town. If there was other class four roads that they plow. And I came across a couple of places that they plow. The roads weren't even classified that they that the town takes care of. We and looked into that. It, and, and then also, I have gone and found roads that are class three that only go to one house. You're driving half a mile out this class three road to one house. This This instance there's going to be three properties you know three houses on this road and and i didn't think that i should be responsible for plowing and sanding for two other properties well if the i'm trying to think if the properties are owned by not by you but by other people i think you can only have in this town only three residences on a road until you have to improve it. I'm not, I'd have to, but I believe I it's something along yes. those lines, right. whether it's two or three. Because we did I, that I down. I've seen that in my research. We did that down on, uh, what was that? Uh, Brown's, uh, Brown's Mill Road. Mm -hmm. It was a private drive that they were improved. They, uh, they subdivided out for some wonderful. family members. Yes. And there was a discussion in the town, uh, in the select board about access and whether or not uh, they could uh, we could give a variance i think they were supposed to uh, improve it to the uh, yeah. um, there are several residents at the end of brown's mill road that is on flats four road yeah. um, and the road is has not been upgraded well this is before we get to the end of the class four road it's a it was, it was a, some fields or some land that set them back away from the river and have to go back through the minutes to see. But. I know there's quite a lot of residents out in the class four part of it. Uh, that's not a class four. four. It's, is it not even a class four? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a driveway. That was, that was Carl Barco sold that as, as a right away. I'm getting to Brown's Mill you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, so it says. Class three Browns Mill Road and Browns Mill Road extension is a quarter mile total. Yeah, before it goes And the extension is after you go across the bridge, you take the left and left the bank yeah. there. Yeah. That that's that's the extension. Or it might be uh, there was, there's a stake right after you go by. Well, that's driveway right on that knoll. Yeah. 
that is the town road. And the state pays us for 2.5 tenths of a mile. And I've measured it, and that's right where it is. It's right where that stake is. Yeah. And the rest of it is not a class four road. It's, it's, it was, um, Carl Bartol bought that right away from the father Back when of the that world. Tip was open. Huh? Back when that pit was running. Yes. Until the bridge, they couldn't go across the bridge anymore. And then they built the bridge across the river there, right by Bartos. They put a steel bridge across there, and they hauled over that until the state put the new concrete bridge in, because that used to be wooden. Yeah. Yeah, because he bought a right away, a 50 foot right away from Mr. Willett, the, the father of all the kids, yeah. the ones that are living there. Because when I worked here before in the 80s, we used to go right around Willett's house. The driveway went right around the house. We would plow up, nose the snows off, and then we'd just go right around the house and come out of there because we had no place to turn around, and that's what he let us do. Yeah, but the, the only thing I'm wondering is, is the, um, is the uh, how many residences before it has to be upgraded to a, or even if the town hall, because of the, it's a town road down there, or a town right of road down there, would it be how many residences would have to be in there before we could, we'd have to upgrade it to a, uh, maintain it for fire access, basically. I'm not sure that they just that won for I, I think access. we just decided that yeah. it made sense at three or four or whatever we said. It's either that or it's, in the, it's, a, it's a state statute. I can't it, does, it doesn't show up in orange books. Mm -hmm. I think when those properties right. were developed, um, zoning was there. There was yeah, there wasn't um, zoning enforceable zoning. Now I don't think that the DRB would permit homes going down. There without a right-of-way. I mean, it's a right-of-way, right right. a public right-of-way. Well, there is a public right-of-way. It's just a matter of who maintains it. No, it's it's, um, it's not a public right-of-way, actually. It's a right-of-way that belongs to the property owners down there. It does not belong to the town. How, how many? How, no, I'm, oh, I'm down in Browns Mill. No, no, I'm, I'm talking sorry. Black okay, <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> you hit me confused. Well, how, many, how many residents are on the other end of that road that comes out on Rail Hill? You're because, on Browns Mill Road, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm still talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get back on the topic here with, with uh, Black Road. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, you were talking about residents down yes. there before you had to reclassify it. Yeah. Now, you got road coming off Rowell Hill, just above the cemetery, and it goes down in there. I don't know how many houses are down in there. Yeah. <clears throat> that road used to go right straight through. Come out on Browns now. Yeah. But that's how it's, it's, it's off. That's, that's, that's not even on our map. No, I know that. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're, too. we're in a butter on Black yep. Cemetery Road, so there are three. We, it's not our primary access. It's off across town road. Yeah. But if they bank that corner anymore, we might have to look for yeah. other access. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, but so anyway, yeah. we go for about uh, 400 feet. Yeah, they go all the way down to my uh, barn drive, to my barn driveway. They use that yeah, do okay, occasionally use it. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen the cars over the bank of trying to get back up over out of Johnson's driveway before, just spinning away on the you know, light snow thing, just spinning away. Now, uh, if it was an emergency or anything, that car is stuck there on that hill. I don't know how they got out. I I didn't pull one up that day. Yeah, so. That uh, uh, I have no problem. Uh, I'd like to see the Black Cemetery Road open right up completely. Yeah. <laughs> with a yes. new bridge and everything, right? Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. It's a great, uh, it's a great but, recreational place. Yeah. It's a great I mean, trail. there's a lot of there's a lot of places that people, uh, the mountain bikes and the hikers, yeah. they they go down that they go down that trail. And, and I don't know. I don't know where that to. parking yeah. snowmobiles. We are snowmobiles, yes. Yeah. Um, parking, yeah. Um, T Tim, to answer your question, there's there's three or four mailboxes on Paradise Mountain Road there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how many people live down there. No, I was just thinking. Uh, uh, you, I was using that as an example. I remember we had a debate um, 
back in um, 2006 <coughs> or seven, the, uh, the uh, family on uh, uh, Brown's Mill had uh, subdivided, and they were talking about putting houses on those. And, they were, and the discussion was, how many houses should we allow before they have to take and have a uh, public access, or at least access that's good enough for uh, fire and ambulance. Well, wouldn't it have to be a class three if the town didn't do anything with it? No, no Rob, Rob, Rob Hill. I mean, we, we do stuff with that, but that, that's at our choice. Sure. But, okay. Yeah, but I mean, that that's a class four. Yeah. The whole the whole thing is class four on no. Rao, or no, just down, a section down down the section eight close? Three and then, three and then from and then Butler's. Down is three. It's three. Yeah, yeah. so it's just the, the four is just a section they don't do. What's that, John? Sorry, like the situation. Just. Oh, we're talking about a town, an existing town road, and I think we're yeah. talking about like the private development still. Yeah. So that's what I mean. But even so, I mean, from the town's perspective, to be fair, if we're asking people to improve a road yeah. to put to develop it, we should be you know we should be held to the same standard. That's, yep. And then the the the, 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 the zoning with the curb cuts. I'm surprised they would allow it if there wasn't proper egress and ingress to the, to the, if you couldn't get a fire truck down there. Yeah. Once you start to accumulate more and more houses, especially when the road's already there. Well, a fire truck can get down in there, all right, yeah. in the grounds, no, that's for sure. Well, one, of the, one of the troubles with zoning in general is I see it's like creep. You know, one house comes in and then five years later another house comes in and the road is still the same. It just is that see more practical issues as a result of that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, Dave. Yeah. So uh, there's one of uh, three taxpayers along that stretch of road. Um, uh, I guess they were uh, strongly against it. Um, we pay a lot of taxes as well. Um, and we, and we have for a long time. Um, that that road was opened up uh, originally. Uh, um, the town allowed the walkers to have a driveway down there, and for oh, under 20 years now, I guess uh, they've been maintaining and plowing the road. And um, it seems like recently um, they uh, wanted to. Um, not bear the cost burden of that anymore and trying to sort of push the off onto the taxpayers. Um, we don't think that's um, particularly fair. Um, the, a big concern we have um, personally is uh, if, if the only plows that the town has, I don't know what, I don't know what the, the town's fleet is for plowing, but if the only plows that the town has for plowing are the, are the large trucks. Um, is there some pickup Small trucks? Ones, yeah. There's some pickup trucks. Um, um, in that case, um, you know, we if it was just the large trucks, we would be really bothered by truck going down and, you know, four in the morning and, um, you know, plowing and then backing up and kind of jiggling around with the backup beepers and the lights for a little while and, it, um, and then trying to get out of there. So that, that would be really disruptive if, if, it's a, if it's a pickup truck type truck that can direct the plow, um, uh, that's, that's not as bad. Uh, if, it's, if it's a uh, class three road, we don't know what the obligation of the town is to upgrade that road to a class three standard. Um, I suspect if it's upgraded to a class three standard, um, our um, our front yard would be really torn apart. We'd be cutting down trees that have been there for um, for decades, many decades, um, and we certainly don't want that. Um, um, so we're against we're against uh, definitely changing the classification. Um, um, we we really don't 
don't want that. Um, and I think the 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 discussion about the trade-off between okay, we're doing Colos Road as a you know a three to a four, so what's you know so we got extra money now we can go from a four to a three on this one. They're, they're completely unrelated. I mean that they, they don't they don't uh, that discussion of trading one for the other um, it is a completely unrelated subject. Well, I wasn't thinking of so much trading. I wasn't even thinking about upgrading it to a class four. I mean, a class three. But it's a question of public safety. If he's, if Josh is putting in a bunch of tenant houses or anything else down there, if he's having people who are not related living there, then there is a certain public interest in keeping it safe. And and so, what are you are you just talking then again about plowing? In, in that capacity, Brad? I'm not I, sure. I, That's what this hearing's for. Oh. <laughs> well, I, yeah, we're sort of we're sort of confused because the com with the you know we we got something that said that the conversation was about upgrading to class three, and so far all we've heard about is a request for plowing, and they're two very different oh, yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, Josh never requested to upgrade to class three. He was just interested in us plow as a town maintain the road in the winter. Did, did the notice not say the changing it though? It, 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 it did. I mean, and I, and I think that's one of the options that we're considering. So how? So um, Dave and Beth, how would you feel about if the town um, smaller truck, a plow truck, came in and just plowed that in the winter? Nope. If if the if the driveway permit that's been over and over uh, contested for some reason, um, if that remained as is, and and the plowing. Was done with a you know a pickup size or you know a one ton truck with a um, directional blade on it. On All of our trucks get directional blades. Yeah. Oh, really? Even yeah. the big trucks? Yeah. The big ones have the same thing. Okay. Um, and the big ones go in a lot worse roads than yours. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so if 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 the if the travel lane stayed the same and the width of the Allowed driveway stayed the same, and there was plowing, uh, and that was the issue. Um, I think we would be perfectly fine with that. Um, uh, but if if creep starts to happen and it starts to you know yeah. wiggly woggle all over the place, um, you know that that would just not be good. Yeah. We would think that. Was what do you think good. about that, Josh? If we came in and used the smaller trucks and managed to plow that. The only thing is, is, is if we plow the pickup, we can't change. This is a pickup we want. We have a plow for the front of the pickup, just in case of emergency, if somebody breaks down, we can open up the road. Okay. But there's no sand. Okay. So, the truck that I drive is a six wheeler, mm -hmm. but I have salt on most of the time, but I can sand. So, I mean. So, so, so it's not gonna it's not gonna get done first thing in the morning and get sanded. So plowing but not sanding at the same time right away, does that seem reasonable? So Josh, any thoughts about that? I mean <clears throat> that sounds reasonable to me. Um, maybe if he's down there first thing, a little bit of salt on the steep uh, part. I don't want no. the salt on the <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. No no sure. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, okay. And done that. Yeah. Does the salt work on rock? Yeah. <laughs> That's all lead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's enough dirt there. It would be nothing but mud. Yeah. 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 But so, so it, it seems to me, and maybe I'm, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, that we seem to have a kind of a reasonable compromise that everybody seems to be happy with. So, uh, is any other? The only thing I would like to see is I like to see. Uh, uh, what the listers have to say as far as the, as the value of the property, how much it goes up, and how much <laughs> okay, you think. <laughs> well, the other thing is, is uh, uh, how many how many residences down there do you plan on, on trying to maintain, Josh? Just the two. Just the two? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the and, two and in addition to yours, or, or three total? No, just the two. Just my your, house and then my uh, apartment, apartment I have over okay. there. Right. And then even in the future, you know, that is for the time being now. 
The house that we live in now is kind of for outgrown us as, as a couple. Yeah. It's a big house, and we're even thinking in the future of selling that house and moving into that apartment that I'm putting in. So then it would be three or four different properties on that road. Well, it's time to start the select board meeting. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, 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 I thought this wasn't going to happen uh, until 7 15 on the agenda. So. I'll, I'll entertain the uh, motion to start the select board meeting and uh, we uh, have a continuance on this. It's up to the board. So. Can, I, can I just ask a question? Sure. Is, is this discussion then at all continue under the select board meeting? No. No, not there. So not we're done. This is on the agenda. Okay. This was a half hour uh, public hearing for the roads. Okay. So is anything resolved? What's that? Is it, have, have we resolved anything? Is, is well, what, we're looking, what I'm looking for is uh, for some numbers from the listers and some numbers uh, and uh, I guess some stuff I want Dana to find for me. So <clears throat> the reason we call it a hearing is it's a, it was a requirement of law that if we were going to reclassify this, we had to hold a public hearing. It was so. We were doing this in the interest of hearing from everybody so that we could collect this information and so there is not a decision being made tonight. So there's a continuance of the hearing? There, well, so we won't we'll have, yeah, so we would, well, I, I think we have to have two, right? Yeah. And then we could conceivably, after the next one, then immediately make a decision after that, after the second one. Yes, Mr. Moore. Oh, all right. Uh, so you got to have a second meeting on the... Uh, that's much on trail. trail. That's pretty well. Okay, so that one's done. Yeah, You're not good. reclassifying it. We're nope. just going to restrict the winter supply. Yep. And it still remains to class three. Road. And we'll see how that works for a year. Fair enough. So, so you can make a ruling on that without continuing a public hearing, but this. You so, have to so, so we're still looking for information on this one. Okay. Okay. Just to be clear. Yeah. Whereas with them, it was, uh, with the Kuaz Trail, it was strictly a matter of whether the residents were for sure. Yeah. But uh, so my next question is, is it the next select board meeting? Yeah. It's when this is it, can it continue? So because I might be out of town okay. in two weeks. Where? Uh, so I'll, I'll just find out. I'll come and talk with Dane and find out. What, uh, well, before we send out the next agenda, how many days do we have to wait to uh, we have to post before our hearing? <coughs> for a public hearing? Um, it was 30 days. So, this right now. so it won't be next meeting. Yeah. It will be yeah. meeting after. So it's, it's another 30 days? It's October. It's October. It's October. In so, so are we going to find out before the snow flies? May I have a motion on COAS um, trail of what you'd like to do? Oh. Sure. Yeah, so, be uh, because we never completed that motion, um, I move that we um, cease considering the classification of the cost. Second. Any further discussion? Three quarters. Hearing none. Those in favor. Aye. And you also have a decision on the on not doing winter maintenance on the last year. We should put that aside for meeting. Yeah. We'll take. Yeah. Then we'll take and uh, we'll put it on the next agenda. And then we can take and uh, put it down as a trial. Okay, so the, the agenda of the 18th? Yep. The next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank all you for much. attending. Thank you. Thank you all very much. All right. Make the same motion. Oh, so, so I move that we uh, no. the main you handicap here or what? Yeah. 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 Order and uh, additions or changes to the agenda.
Yes, I would like to um, add a few items to the agenda. I would like to add consideration to reappoint um, the fire warden to the the fire warden. I would like to add um, having the board sign a resolution for promoting smart growth, which I'll explain when we get there. And I would also like the liquor board to convene to consider a catering life. Catering life didn't get done earlier. That's we now. So it's in the wrong room. What was that the first one, Dana? Uh, I didn't think I would check that part. The fire board. Yeah. That would have been it last week. Okay. Uh, public comment. We're here. Hearing none. Treasury report. Okay. I had the preliminary audit on August 21st. There was no issue. I'm assuming that Linda called one of you. Did she call you, Brad? I'll be calling you, I'm sure, at some point then. But like I said, there's no issues. It uh, went very well. She was here for uh, until 2 o'clock. She should be back um, in the first and second days of uh, Should we call her? No, I'll, I'll just remind her that you haven't heard from her. Okay. I'm sure that she'll recall that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen her either. That's all I've got. Well, they think about it. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. <coughs> we'll take for general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, 20G04 with checks 19506 through 19565 in the amount of $102,272.91. Also, payroll warrant number 20 04 for payroll from August 4th, 2019 through August 17th, 2019 in the amount of $43,687.65. Also payroll warrant number 20-05 for payroll from August 18th, 2019 through August 31st, 2019 in the amount of $41,366.58. I second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, Conservation Commission, Mr. Tintilli. Good evening. Uh, the Berlin Conservation Commission has been approached by the uh, Vermont Cross, let me get the name right, Cross Vermont, Cross Vermont Trail System, which eventually is a bike trail that's going to go from the west all the way east, kind of like the Lamoille Valley Trail, but this is the southern one. And they've been working really hard on this project for years. Uh, so they came to the Conservation Commission and got very excited about uh, the progress they've made and the status of the bike trail path that we've all seen in Montpelier, extending up past U32. And eventually, I'll let, let Greg explain. This is uh, Greg Weston and Kim McKee from the uh, Trail Association. So they approached us and we got very excited about the possibility and looked into our bike path fund, the Berlin, town of Berlin's bike path fund, which has been on hold for over 10 years because of the right-of-ways with the railroad and their idea that they were going to have to use more sidings because they thought they had a big contract. I guess it was Rock of Ages and other industries there. So that has been put on hold, that's been on hold for a while, well, as I understand it. Rock of Ages is moving stone now. They are again. Yeah. But originally, 10 years ago, when they posted all those signs at the crossings, uh, they were anticipating so much stone at that point yeah. that the bed next to the bed they're using, they were going to possibly build sidings on. Yeah. And they didn't want to grant us any right away for a bike path next to the tracks yeah. to get to Price Chopper from, let's say, Agway or around there, the back way to Price Chopper to eventually tie into Barry City and Barry Town. So we're thinking of a whole network which was put on hold. Uh, so we have funds in this bike path uh, account and we thought after they made, and they'll make a brief presentation to you, we would like as the commission has uh, 
agreed to, the five members, we've all agreed to, we would like to take $15,000 from the Bike Path Fund and put it towards Vermont Cross Trail Association and completion of helping complete the bridge over the Win Winooski River. So I think to give you more information about what this encompasses and with the scope of the whole project, I think Greg could probably make a, a small little presentation if you'd like to hear about the association and what they're planning to do. Didn't we donate... In 2015, the town gave $3,000 out of No, that was for, that 3000 was for uh, design? No, it was for the same, it's in the bank, it's for the <laughs> same bridge. Um, the, um, at that time, the city of Montpelier uh, made, made a, a contribution to the bridge over the Winooski, which they had contributed money to the portion of the bike path that's in the side of the city, partly, the, mostly that they're building, but also including the part that we're working on. Um, and But then the, this, this bridge over the Winooski River is physically in half in East Montpelier and half in Berlin. And um, the, so in a few years ago, the city of Montpelier said they would contribute a dollar per resident to the bridge, even though it's not in Montpelier. If, if all the towns in the U32 school district also donated a dollar per resident, and that that happened. So Berlin gave it at a select board meeting. Most of the other towns had to vote for it at town meeting. Um, and uh, at the select board meeting that I was at, <laughs> um, folks on the select board said, well, you know, we have a bike path fund, so if you're if you need more, it's, it's a question that could be asked, yeah. and um, and so um, we are done with the design. Uh, we've received all our permits except for Act 250, but it's in process, and uh, we're done with all the right of way, all the federal highway stuff. So we really are ready. To, we're just in the end game of, of, and we have these giant federal grants, you know, to, for this bridge over the Winnipeg River and a couple miles of trail. And, and we're in the final stages of raising the last m amount of the local match. Um, and because we're a nonprofit organization, the local match, um, you know, we have, to, we have to ask for it. You know, we would, yeah. like a town would, you know, be taxed. And how much is the local match? Uh, the, the, we, are, the, we need to raise 250000 and we're at two fourteen right now um, for these large federal grants. Um, and. Uh, you know, full disclosure, uh, the pr probably we'll, we need to raise more in the future, but let's not worry about that right now. Uh, okay. Because the price of steel, and of course, is we're building a 200 foot steel bridge, and the price of steel is the biggest single cost in the bridge, and with all the tariffs and stuff. So, but that's for another day. <laughs> right now, we're trying to close in on the match the, the big grants that we have now. If that makes sense. And we'll, we'll so you're roughly thirty six thousand short, right? Yeah. And you want Berlin to for to donate for fifteen? Uh, yep. And we, we went to the uh, yeah. That's they came to us and we talked yep. about it. And we went everywhere from ten to twenty five. But Tom and J C and you know we we decided that fifteen would be large enough to make some news, give Berlin, you know, some kudos on contributing, but would still have uh, close to 40,000 left if the other bike path were to ever yeah. come to fruition. So we don't, so given that we don't know where the railroad is with the right of ways, it's still a possibility. I mean, that's still on the back burner, not on the front burner, but we thought as a commission, we said 15 would be kind of something substantial. Maybe we could, they could leverage it to other towns saying, look what Berlin gave, let's close that $36,000 gap and get this thing done so they can get their federal funding, yet we would still have something in our back pocket substantial to still pursue our bike path. Uh, that we're, you know, the, the, the dream of that of 10 years ago that's been put on the back burner all this time. So I think it's kind of like we all agree that it's significant, but we're not shooting the whole ball of wax at it, so to speak, you know. And, and I can quickly add that we would definitely leverage it or use it as a challenge to maybe not necessarily other towns, because not every town has a bike path fund yeah. <laughs> available, but certainly to other donors. And we're now sort of yeah, as a charity sort of in that last phase of a fundraising campaign. So we're going to some larger donors and they, they always want to 
be matched themselves, you know, and so this would be a way for us to go to them and say, uh, you know, this your donation would be matched by the town, so and so on. What I found significant about the trail and where it is along the kind of northwestern side of the Winooski towards the power plant, after it goes by Capital City back through there, is that it ties in with the U32 bike trips, the switchbacks that go up to campus. Yep. And with that new bike path coming from the high school to U32, I'm still envisioning someday, not that I want to get into politics of schools, but kids would bike back and forth easily and safely between U32 and Montpelier. Because this path is going to go right at the base of the, the woods where U32 bike trails are. And then it will continue past that and jump the river and then connect to the old, you know, going out of East Montpelier, the old railroad bed that goes the Wells River. Yeah. Isn't it the Wells River? It, the, uh, this project, the bridge is most of the money, and the, the location of this bridge is uh, by the Kubota dealership. So if you're heading out Route 2, um, just past uh, Shepherd Valley Equipment, there's the Winooski Hydro Dam. And, and if you look over there, you see stone bridge abutments. That's where the old railroad used to cross the river. And so we would build the new bridge on, on those old abutments. But that's most of the money. But the project itself is miles of new trail as well as a bridge. And the miles of new trail include a, a, a bike path, an official like, to spec bike path that would connect up to U32 and then back down. Um, and also up to uh, Route 14 uh, by the uh, Humane Society, or by, by where the old rail bed is. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's, that's, our, that's this project. And um, on not not this project or this fifteen thousand dollars, but for the future, uh, we also talked to the conservation commission. Our mission is to work within the Winooski uh, watershed, so that's kind of our area of in, of interest. So obviously, Berlin is in that, and um, so we would love to work together with the conservation commission, or if you have in the future another bike path committee or something, you know, with the town groups to um, to to build out. To, to, to spend to spend your bike path money on an actual bike path, you know, as envisioned, to connect into the more settled parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, obviously, our current focus is this project by U32. Any, any prognosis on the other on the other bike path, Phil? We, I mean, I'm just going on Tom Willard's, you know, archive archival history on mm -hmm. what's transpired, but uh, no, not. Not really. The other thing that, um, and this isn't for this meeting, but we're as a conservation commission, we have, uh, I have started searching and made some contacts through the school, and I would like to have a recreation commission uh, that sunsetted years ago, and I really think the town needs a recreation because we're in conflict at times between conservation and recreation. We're serving both needs right now, but I don't think that's wise, and if we can get citizen participation to form a recreation committee, this eventually might land in their lap, the bike path, and this as opposed to conservation, which has other issues to address. Now, does the railroad still own the right of way all the way through there? No. The, um, uh, the, the railroad, the portion of the old railroad bed that is now, that is in Berlin, uh, which is adjacent to Route 2, is owned by the state. Um, and the okay. state bought it just for cash. They just bought it from the railroad in the 50s. And they, they, they kept it. Other places they sold it off or they gave it away. But um, where it's in Berlin, uh, it's they kept it because now it's uh, the part that is obviously Route 2 is administered by VTrans. And then along the river, it, it's administered by the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So it's um, so it's all state land where the old, where the old railroad that is in Berlin is all state land now. So, so you're sure. coming up in front of harvest equipment where they've been doing the work, getting in front of Blodgett's, that been going up Galveston Hill and taking the uh, the road basically off to the right, right to the power dam. Yeah, the power plant road. And the, the road to the power dam is the old rail bed. Yeah. And there the state doesn't own it. It's own complicated history, but it's owned by the city of Montpelier, and then it's owned by Green Mountain Power, and then it's owned by Winooski Hydroelectric Company. And all of and uh, all of those have have given us permanent easements okay. um, to either use the rail bed or to build a new trail that's next to the railway. Yeah. So then you go across, you go above the power dam, you go across the 
River. Right. And then you're on the old U.S. Route 2 roadbed uh, by the pullout. Exactly, yeah. And where does it go from there? It, it continues between the uh, river and the road, um, uh, parallel to the old Route 2, which yeah. is down there along the bank. But we're not on old Route 2 because it's um, collapsing into the river. It was built close to the river. So we're up the hill a little bit. So we build a new trail. It goes out just, just before Vermont Country Campers, yeah. the first RV dealership, as you go out on Route 2. And then there, it will, we have a, 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 a miraculously, we have a permit from B-Trans to put a, a crossing there, so there'll be a trail crossing there. Um, and then the town of East Montpelier actually owns land right across the road, uh, and then goes up to a land that's on the Fairmont Farm. Yeah. And I was just meeting the Fairmont Farm this morning, so we're purchasing from them a trail easement to get on out to um, where the real bed picks up again, and, and then so... Yeah, and brought by the very uh, uh, humane society. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the uh, so that that's the route that goes east west, and then the, the, also there's a it, it squiggles up the hill to connect to the school and back down. Again. Yeah. So the, uh, the you know the pitch to the conservation commission was um, the uh, obviously U thirty two is a, is a direct Berlin connection, um, and it you know it just so happens that. Then, the, most of the cost of the whole project is this bridge. Half of the bridge is actually in Berlin, yeah. and our sort of our pitch was: this is a, in, the town has been sort of sitting on the bike path money for a while, and I thought was, hey, you know, you could, this was a way to actually turn some of that money into an actual bike path, or to leverage it into a big help, a gigantic help for making a real project happen. How long before you think the Act 250 permit will be approved for the bridge? Or so, do you see any hurdles or anything? Yeah, we're, we've reason? been uh, working on it for a while, so we feel like we're in the end game, so sometime this fall. And is Fairmont, Fairmont Farm your last trail easement that you need to acquire? It, it's, it goes on from there. The, the, um, the, the old railroad bed beyond Fairmont is um, uh, now a driveway for multiple houses. So it, it's a it's a longer so that it's not a trail building question but it's a a longer conversation with 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 the you know it gets more complicated just because the the rail bed is being used as someone's driveway or many someone's driveway and is, um, it, is it privately owned by the yeah. residents yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so we um, used to ride horses out there yeah. and we had to get permission from yeah. the landowners to ride on there yeah. yeah and so um, so it's it's just a it's a very short distance. But there's six different landowners in a very short distance, and so it's, it's a longer conversation. But between uh, either working together with them or working together with neighboring landowners, maybe to go around that, we feel like we can get across Route 14 one way or the other. Yeah. We're also talking to the Washington Electric Co-op, who owns the land just south of Fairmont. There's another way around. Great. So there's there's options once you get up there. But. And it looks like like your I mean according to your map, your your current trail has you going up Route 14 to two. Yeah. Sort of kind of going wildly out of the way yes. to come back down. Yeah, and the this project was identified as the top priority for the Cross Vermont Trail in 1994 um, because uh, the idea was to celebrate and promote and extend local trails with the vision that there be a you know connected statewide network of local trails. But because there isn't currently a, 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 a summertime or four season statewide network of local trails. The, you know, we would identify the best quote unquote local roads to connect together existing trails. And and then Boat Route Two, you know, going through East Montpelier is not not a not a good bike route because it's because people drive like crazy. And and the and they use the, the the shoulder as a passing lane and stuff. So if you're walking or biking in the shoulder it's a little sketchy. And um, so so that's why it was identified as a priority to get off it. And it's taken this long to, <laughs> sure. to get this far. But. Well, I'd like to move to allocate fifteen thousand dollars from the um, bike path fund to the Cross Vermont Trail Association. And I second the motion. Do we want to take and have that money go to the to the conservation commission with the express interest of it going to a trail or to the, to the bike trail, or do we want to take it from the select board? Do we need to? You want us to pass it to you? <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Just a question. Yeah. If you were to pass it to them, they would have to come back to you. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to say it's admirable all of the work that you've put into getting this far. Thank you. Any further discussion on this? 
Okay. This, this, uh, did Rob say that um, when, Rob, uh, well, when we took and gave the 3000 Rob had no problems with it? Yeah, no issues with it, no. You have, the, you have the authority to withdraw the funds. As long as for bike use? Yes. Mm -hmm. or, tra or trail use. Trail yeah. use. Yeah. All those in favor? Those uh, opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Hope you get your other 21,000. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Great. Would you email me and tell me who we mail the check to and yeah. write it out to and that sort of thing? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come in, Fred. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good evening. I'll probably be back with some more information <laughs> about the commission and once I get a, a group of key, I have two identified two people already that want to be on a recreation commission, and I think we're looking for five. So I'll have to work with Dane and get the logistics on how we go about recreating a commission like that. But and we also have one member. I'm not sure the board knows about Matthew Polk. If we have he's on the. We should probably officially. Yeah. Delegate him to be a member of the Berlin Conservation. We probably should. Um, okay. If you could just give me his information, yep. because the board should be the one to appoint. Right. So we can come back and do that at the next meeting. Yeah. Give you all the information. And Great. Could you have him write just a letter of interest? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any potholes on the way home? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yes. You're welcome. Okay, signatures of the resolution for a grant from Vermont Housing and Community Development. Back in July 1st, you had voted to apply for the grant for, um, from the um, Department of Housing and Community Development. This is for the grant to assist with a professional assistance on the new town center. Um, and this document here is they needed someone to be appointed by you to be the grant administrator. Um, oftentimes it's the chair, and I can tell the chair you need to go on to their uh, grant computer system and be registered on that. And for someone who is registered, which is myself, it's quite cumbersome. And so I suggested that I be appointed as the grant administrator. Yes, I know the <laughs> So I uh, move because I like you. <laughs> move to appoint Dana Hadley um, as the grant administrator for the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development grant application. Can I second that motion? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Dana. Yes. Anytime. <laughs> Tom said, would Brad like to do that? And I said, I don't dislike Brad that much. <laughs> okay, uh, so declaration of official intent for sewer extension project. This um, is on the sewer project. This is the Payne Turnpike North project. And um, it was approved on in July 2nd of 2018 by the select board to um, go for a bond for two million two hundred thousand, and it was voted on by the voters of the town of Berlin on August 2018 to uh, go for this bond. And we received a note from the bond council. It's Paul. Giuliani and, and uh, Montpelier, who does all our bond work. He does everybody's And he does everyone's bond work, so that's why we have him. Um, and he, he tells me we need a declaration of official intent. And so um, I guess I'm asking the board to approve the declaration of official intent. And this is signed by the clerk. Move to approve the declaration of it official intent um, for the sewer project as presented. Second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I have a lot of housekeeping things to do. Um, 
The next item is the option agreement for the purchase option for the Berlin Elementary School property. Um, this is, we have discussed this, this option agreement was voted on by the Berlin School Board uh, on June 24th, just before they disbanded. Uh, and it gives the town um, the option to purchase the school property in the event it's no longer used for a school. Um, part of the agreement with the Washington Unified Long Name School District, school district um, also has similar wording in it. This is um, in addition to um, there are, it's a purchase by the town if the town chose to do it for one dollar. In here, it also notes that if that were to occur and there were encumbrances, i.e. the bond, the town would be responsible to satisfy that bond. The whole bond or just our share? Um, the balance due at the time of the transaction. So it would be, to answer your question as best I can, I would say the whole, what was due. Yeah. I was paying for it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and this is and this has already gone to Rob previously. It has. It, it, it has. It's so uh, move to accept the option agreement with the Berlin School Berlin Elementary School Board. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion for a second. Motion carries. Motion carries. And approval of select board minutes. This will be the program plan record. Approval of select board minutes. I make the motion of the approval of select board minutes for both the August 1st, 2019 and August 15th, 2019. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And now, Nick uh, Gerarchek. Yes. Um, the Fire Warden is appointed to a five-year term. Nick's term expired on June 30th of this year. He has indicated he would like to be reappointed, and he has been vetted by the state of Vermont, the forester for the state of Vermont, who has suggested that you reappoint him. And move to appoint Nick Garbacek as a Fire Warden for Berlin. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So I need the chair where it says chair. Yeah, motion carries and thank Nick for volunteering. Absolutely. Actually, there's places for all the select board members and to say. Yes, but I'm just pointing out one says oh. chair and one says member. Not that gotcha. there's any I'm putting in <laughs> ahead of each other. <laughs> Good. Oh, are they in the refrigerator? This mine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I came over really early this morning and turned in bills so I could get grading. You know I'm not up that early. No, I don't. Yeah. Okay, okay. smart girl. Yes. I'm gonna just sneak out and get these. Sure. Thing. Thing. Thank you. Come on, What's that? What's dates? Are they in the middle? Okay. 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 It's not a date after everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Okay. Um. Tom brought this to my attention. Um, we had informally said to um, entities such as the hospital that if they were to do any improvements and need more water service, that we would expect that it would be our water system to get the And we felt we don't really have a formal document that says that. Um, other than a rent that we shut the water off. Um, <laughs> but we did do a resolution um, saying that whereas the town of Berlin operates municipal water and wastewater systems to ensure the health and safety of its constituents, and whereas the town of Berlin has increased construction systems, and whereas the fees we use as other systems pay for this indebtedness, and whereas the town of Berlin recognizes that continual financial and operational health of the system require expansion of the user base 
can now be is resolved by Berlin Select Board will require any new projects requiring major site plan review as defined in Berlin Land Use and Development Regulations as amended to be connected to the existing well, systems when feasible. Feasibility to connect will be determined by the Town of Berlin Public Works Board. And we're asking if you would approve that and sign that. Makes sense. I make a motion to approve the resolution from the Smart Growth as proposed. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, actually, um, yeah, uh, we'll do uh, administrator's report. Yes, um, I have I have a few things. Um, Saturday, September twenty first, between ten and two, the planning commission will be traveling over to South Burlington to talk with South Burlington officials about the um, their new de designated town center. I don't know if you've been over to South Burlington, but there is a lot of stuff going on. If you go down Dorset Street with all the construction, which is part of this, um, there will be a van leaving the town office at 9 a.m., and Tom wanted to be sure that you were invited if you'd like to go. Um, they expect between 10 and 2. Um, also, um, there has been renewed interest in the sewer mainline extension for Route 12. Uh, this is the line that would potentially service the Green Mountain Transit Maintenance Garage and Weston's Mobile Home Park, and as well as a few other businesses and residents that are in that area. Um, much of this project is through funding from the, uh, through VTrans, federal funds that VTrans has secured. Um, the remaining project cost of about $400,000 was going to be um, financed by the former park owner of Weston. Um, and that, but since that person no longer owns the park and that is not um, feasible, I just bring this to your attention um, that this project is about $400,000 short if the board wanted to consider financing it or feeling it was um, What's the interest in the, in the sewer line down there now, Nina? Well, I think there is a lot. Obviously, the state has a lot of interest because of the funding and, and get yep. that one place. Um, I think that the mobile home park <laughs> is very interested. I mean, many of those, I think it's a good thing for the mobile home park because many of those, their uh, current system well, at least you'll listen to is tired, um, for lack of a better way to put it. And I think. It's also a good sanitary thing for that for that area. Um, the Mobile Home Park um, is a co-op now, and they're a brand new co-op, and they, like any new entity, has limited resources that they can um, do this with. Um, this is not happening tomorrow, but I think that it would be a good time for the board to consider what if and I, I don't know what the Public Works Board is considering on that. How do we zone? Well, yeah. the, qu the question I would have is... It would be covered eventually through user fees instead of not tax money. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if... Um, how, how to say this. Um, If they're going to take and run sewer from Montpelier down through, would it be better for Montpelier to own the line or for us to own the line or maintain the line? Well, I'll tell you my opinion, and it's just my opinion. I don't think you should allow another community to own a line in your town. I'm trying to think. Does Mont Montpelier, Montpelier does have on the Barry Montpelier Road. Yeah. Uh, they don't own the sewer, but they have the water system that goes up to uh, 
Is it Dunkin' Donuts somewhere in, in that Midway. area? Or the Midway, Bowling Alley. Bowling Alley? Is that as far as it goes? Mm -hmm. uh, which, which they they own, and, this, and they certainly have been responsible and have taken care of that, and I'm not saying that for that reason, but I'm just saying that I think that when you have a line, a sewer line, and obviously we're very closely connected to Montpelier because that's where the sewer goes, our allocation. Yeah, the only thing I was thinking, Nina, is that it's so disjointed from, everything, from the rest of the sewer understood. system. Yeah, understood. And I only bring this up because it's probably going to be discussed with the Public Works Board, so they probably will be also talking to you about it at some point. Um, well, I certainly have no objections either way, I guess. How long before you start recouping the $400,000, do you think, for the user fees? Well, I think it obviously would take a while. I mean, I would say you'd probably have looking at something like a 20-year note. And again, when I say user fees, we're talking the entire system. I mean, it would be a debt for the entire sewer system. Can I ask you a question? If, I if they don't do that, why don't they go out down River Road? Um, one of the main, you mean as far as connecting to Montpelier through Dog yeah. River Road? Yeah. I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, the engineering has been done down through Northfield Street. And going down well, that way. I don't know if it's station. better if it went the other way. Um, the state has been highly involved in this this planning process. I think it will require a lift station at yeah. the bottom of the hill. I think either way you go down there, if you require a pumping station. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, would. sure it would. See, You'd have to have a force made. Lot, yeah, more feasible to. Yeah, but there's a lot of ledge on the Dog River Road. You're thinking going directly to the plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shorter distance, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, or the other way around. But I mean, but that's not how the plans were have mm -hmm. uh, where they stand up currently. Where is it end on Northfield Street right now? Um, probably just past. Uh, what's that street? Colonial Drive, or, or yeah, just like before the, the bridge? Houses are. Yeah, yeah, on the left there. I believe that's where it is. Yeah, it ends right there. Something like There's that. There's a manhole right there at the top of the hill. Yeah. So just that's just an FYI. Um, next, we have received an application from Dusevich Development for a tax stabilization um, program for the taxes. Um, they have provided everything in our requirements um, that we need. We are waiting for a letter from the Regional Planning Commission uh, supporting the project, which is, which is a piece. And here's the piece that I'm in a little bit of trouble, is that according to the criteria, we have to have <coughs> our Economic Development Committee um, review this and, and approve of it and bring it to you for your approval. And right now we have one member on that committee who is Jeremy. Um, and so we need to appoint more Two members. Um, what's, the, what's the full call from that? Well, last we had on that committee seven people. We had seven on that committee at one point. Um, and I don't think anyone on this list other than Jeremy wants to continue. And I think a few might not even live in Berlin any longer. Um, I was. I was thinking we would want to have uh, Jamie Stewart from the Central Vermont Economic Development Corps um, involved. I was thinking um, someone from the fire department, someone from police, someone from public work, someone from planning, someone from zoning. And I just wanted your idea what you thought. Um, the members can spare the time. You know, and that's the issue. I mean, those people are busy, but I thought it would just give everyone who might have a different <coughs> viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, and this just came in after I had posted the agenda, so I will be sending you to remind you what the criteria is and what the program is if you're not familiar. I have to reread it every time I think about it. Yeah. So I was going to ask people if they'd be willing to serve on this committee and then bring the names to you so that you can appoint them. Yep. Um, 
and probably most of these people you know, so we won't have to. Um, next, um, Justin is going to be your representative at the town fair for the annual meeting and cast the vote on behalf of Berlin. Um, I was going to sign you up for the, I don't know if you're going to the, the rest of the town fair, um, Justin, but I think I'll sign you up in the event you wanted to. Um, and if you don't, you don't. But I think that's a good way to do it. And if you do, um, the annual, that what happens also that day is the annual meeting of the Property Casualty Intermunicipal Fund, or PASSIVE. And also right after that is a meeting of the Unemployment Fund, and which I would tell you what it was if I remembered. Um, it's the Employment Resource and Benefits Trust. They call it VERB. Um, they're looking for representation from each town so that they have a quorum. And it sounds riveting. Um, let me give you this in the event you would consider going. Um, and anyone else who'd like to go to the town fair, I'd be glad to sign you up. Um, let me know anytime, day or night. Uh, <laughs> and uh, also, um, let me just give you that for your information. Um, they're asking for anyone that you think should be nominated to the passive board of directors. That's the property casualty something or other. That's the liability one. Um, I didn't have anyone in mind, and if you did, let me know and I'll send them in. It's a three-year commitment. And no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, think no. Lousy at it. <laughs> I was going to say no because you're not going to be here for three years. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The answer stands in <laughs> um, But anyway, um, and that, that's my report tonight. Okay, thank you. Dana. Thank you, Dana. And now we'll entertain, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the select board and convene the little board. So, <laughs> I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, what do we got? We now? have a liquor license and it would be under the liquor license. What's the date? Um, I'm sorry, it is uh, September 26th. They've had no troubles before. And we have no issues. Yeah. They have no issues. I did speak with the Liquor Commission just because I didn't know them. So. I make the motion to approve as presented. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Dana. Okay, thank you. Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the Liquor Commission and reconvene the select board. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn the Liquor Commission and reconvene the select board. Second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Um, any executive session? No. Okay. Round table, uh, Justin? No. Nothing tonight. Well, actually, mm -hmm. yeah, I do. Um, real quick. So just back on some of the not the road stuff, but I don't know if it's an appropriate time to... Yeah. So I thought the meeting was good for uh, just to kind of get stuff out and do an inventory of our town roads. And I don't know how we can do it. I don't know. I went over and talked to you that day about Did what you? you had. I don't remember you. Don't remember. You don't remember that. <laughs> so check this out. Remember I asked you if we were looking at the maps. And I found I found some stuff. I, I just want to get to the bottom of it. But remember we talked about the road across from Brown's Mill yeah. as it goes over. Yeah. And then we looked it up on the map. So this is the one, it wouldn't do it right, but that's the one when you're like leaving Montpelier, you go past M's RBs under the railroad bridge. Are we, we're, are we plowing that road? That's what we have listed on the, the maps is Gladden Road. And then the one across from Brown's Mills is Town Highway 74. And then when I look at our spreadsheet that we have, Town Highway 74 is listed as Gladden Road. So which one is it? You know, kind of just that yeah. sort of thing. Now we're we're 
So yeah. if you go past them's yeah. RVs and go, you know, where the head yeah. towards Monday, we, we approve the past them's RVs here the, and say uh, the bridge was right here, and the Perry's are right yes. here on the right hand yes. side. But this is that road I mean, that other than a couple of times so we like, added. Oh, those up. You know what I mean? Like, so this would be like right down road, here. This is Browns uh, Mills, and then the bridge is here, and then. Yeah. Just below. That's uh, there. That's what's the road. I think that was before so the was just, chain, but um, we I do, don't know. If there's a chain, we do report the chain. I, yeah, they wouldn't print uh, well. We had enough. Yeah. We had any in the yeah. last few years. But. <laughs> but then when I look at what we well, have we over here, is that inventory so And I go to uh, the inventory so that we get from the state we does list the road. 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 It yeah. just has the but highway number. 60. Well, that's the yeah, house number. Yeah. There's no, there's no there's no world. And I think so that's a private road, but there's no, I mean, we're not plowing yeah. it. Whether, so, whether that, oh, I was just, I was looking at that, and I'm like, signed to the wrong road. I mean, I think that we could go over and, and look at it and measure it and see if indeed, but I've never heard of a road that doesn't have a name, and I don't know what it is. I think that's a private road. I think that's yeah, a private, private drive off. That's off a private well, drive. It's so you don't maintain that? No. no. Okay, so, no. I, so that map is wrong. Right that is what, from that's what I think. Okay. Okay. I just, okay. all I, all I was, as I was driving around mm. looking at all these roads, and, and that's a third of our town budget, to me it seems like I'm in for newer select board members like myself coming on. But oh, if, I think, I mean, like, it's helpful to me because, I mean, I'm the one that struggled through trying to put roads to numbers. I mean, because we didn't have that. Right, so I, I, w I would like to somehow figure out a way where we can get a, a good handle on our inventory so that, you know, I mean, who knows, maybe we're missing out on some state aid money. I don't know. Do you? Well, I think um, if we are, I mean, I don't think we're missing out on a lot, but however, why don't we have it right? And if we're missing out, get what we deserve. I think Tim and I could figure out how to inventory our roads. No. I mean, there's going to be, I mean, if you, if we have the we lens. We put all new numbers to them. Yeah, we'll start out with one. <laughs> yeah, start all of them. Yeah. just right around and number them all, we know. I think I'm pretty satisfied that the class two roads are correct. Yeah. Um, so I'm not it, concerned it, about it, those. Like I said, it, the one across from Browns Mill, we never plowed that one out here before. Okay, but then it's listed wrong well, in that if, basement. If it can, if it, no, that one, if that, that is right. It's not yeah. listed. The other one's mislabeled. The only thing I want to, the only thing I want to say there, Tim, is, is that if we're not going to plow yeah, that, that we're not supposed to be plowing right now. Somebody's going to give those people a call and give them a heads up. Well, I mean, right. they, according to Gary, they've been plowing it since after This is wrong. Long. That says Town Highway 74. Well, I, I don't know. Okay. The, the, the house burnt and this they one. built the new house. Like they they was practically right. plowing. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking is, is that I wouldn't want to take it and not plow it. So I think in, the, the other is absolutely people are wrong spot on. Be expected to be plowed at least in the tracks. Or whatever. Yeah, because they don't even plow so after we we know there's no off because we don't look over the track. This, yeah. this is like really bad. That whole yeah. situation is dangerous. Yeah. And this really doesn't want them. Because it's yeah. Yeah. And, they, and they just drive through the snow all the way along. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a plow in the track. Do we have a road name? I think it's a private oh, drive. I mean, if you go but under you the go, highway, under the railroad. Go, yeah, and when yeah. you go on that, though, it shows the address of Gladden Road. And yeah, when you go on here and you click on the parcel. Oh my gosh, you know what, 839, I'm not getting this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. never been a town. Road. Okay. That's just anyway, a private we can drive. Pass. But I think that's, <laughs> a, that's just a data <laughs> issue. his name lives there. I can't think of his name. He's lived there for a long time. Uh, it's not flood. No, he's... Oh, it's uh, out in Northfield. Yeah, uh, hangs around at Martin's. Yeah, takes care of handicapped kids. Is it uh, oh, Lloyd? No, Lloyd. Um, anyway, well, we, that can, we could work out. on that. I mean, I think. Don't you think that that would be uh, something you could do with me? Yeah, on Sundays. On Sundays afternoon, <laughs> you can come to my house on Sunday dinner and I'll off we go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, is if you're finding roads that we're plowing that are not town roads, is that those people need a heads up that we're not going to be maintaining it for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't know anywhere as we're plowing that's not a town road. Um, we had one question about across, across the street here. Going well, that right. is a town road. I think that is the town road. Yeah. That's why I'm... Yeah, that's Gladden Road, I think. Maybe just got it mislabeled on there. So it's... 
That's just a bad. We're going to fix that. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Well, we do have. If it kills us. We'll have to have another hearing. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe another hearing. We do have this road over here, right? That's not a town road. Where? Going down to um, across the street here. You know, oh, the road gets down. Boys. You, mm. I mean, that's so one I of those know. things you've always done it, but we don't really have that on. Is that well, it, we right? never did it until David built his house down there. So how did and Wayne, I mean, Wayne came in here and said that they were going to set power poles down near the towns right away, and the select board told him, no, you weren't. And he said, well, then you're going to start plowing it. And so evidently it was a town road, but there's no name to it. That's not on the maps or anything, if it's a town road. Unless, unless, unless that was Shed Road. Well, that's what I wondered. I wondered about that. Shed Road went right down there. The Shed Road used to go all, up before Next time the I see David, I see him quite often. I'm going to ask him what his, his yes. address is. I feel like it must be a part of Shed Road. Because his mailbox is out here on the blacktop. Yeah. But I think that's probably what it was because it, it, the road didn't come into here. Right. Probably. So really the road, and it went down yeah, to where 62 there. is I, now. I almost down, think down, right? yeah. that before they built Route 62, in the interstate, that road went right through and came out over on Bir uh, Birch Road on off of Richardson Road. I got you. Went right straight across. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and then when the state route put the interstate in in Route 62, they cut it off. that cut it off right there where David Town. Yeah. And I think that was Shed Road all the way down, and then then they just change the name on the other end down there where. Okay. Well, then we want to check the length of Shed Road because make sure we're not being shortchanged. Yeah. How, how long is Shed Road? On oh, here. That's what I'm looking up right here. 67 is the number. Oh, I was looking at the alphabetical list. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have one too? Yeah. Uh, 0.13 miles. Shed Road is 1.3 miles. Point one. Or point one so that's only really just this driveway coming in, uh, I would say. It's mm -hmm. point 0.13, is that even a tenth of a mile? So, so the town told that. Wayne that he wasn't putting poles in, in there right away. And he said, well, then if that's the case, then you're going to start taking care of the road. And he said, we're not here to ask, because I was at the selectman's meeting that night. Did they take it, accept the road? When was this? <laughs> oh, that was That's the whole point. Your father was on the board. <laughs> yep. Harold, Louis Parlow. Hmm. This, this a long time yep. Nobody you can ask now. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I had to be back in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. It was the early 80s, right after I started here. Yep. But they ne never did anything further than that until David and Tila built their house down there. Well, I would say that find out, you know, we spend some time in the vault and the land records. We'll see what we have, and I have to say, we have some good information, and then we have some very... Shady. Shady. I don't know whether it's shady, I want to so say. So, I, I mean, <laughs> shady. incomplete. But when I was here, I left in 89, yeah. we weren't plowing it then, because David hadn't built the house yet. I got you. So when I came back here, they were, well, it was before I came back, I knew it. Well, and we inherited a lot of these places for roads that, I don't know why, but just the select board was generous. The, the throughway in the, in the 62 <coughs> did screw up a lot of roads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? To, uh, just yeah, because no. this, this road right across from the shed road, that, was, that went out to Berlin Pond. That was Maryland Palm Road. Or Brookfield Road. Well, okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Make the motion to adjourn. Select board meeting. I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.